Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I am doing reds as you can see. Red is one of my favorite all-time color hue families. I like almost all reds and I know that I will be like oh this is my favorite yellow or this is my favorite whatever but really when it comes to reds and actually blues almost all of them are just perfect. So I have quite a few reds because I like reds. So let's get on with the swatching, shall we? I'm going to try to color these, excuse me, I've got some dust or something on my desk. I'm going to try to do these in order from orangiest to purpliest, purpliest, most purple, coolest, warmest to coolest. So I'm gonna try this one first um, and as in my other videos if you haven't watched them yet where I did all my yellows I am most of my pe colored pencils are these older Prismacolor pencils when they used to be uh, Barrel Canada because I've had these pencil crowns forever these colored pencils these prism old ones forever since I was in high school so that's why I have the most of them um, yeah so let's get going here I'm gonna do this one here this is the 922, which the internet has told me is called Poppy Red. You can see it's very warm, orangey red. And if I was to pick my least favorite red, these would be them, the, the orangey types of red. I like to use them in artwork. I think they're fantastic when you're doing flowers and things like that. But I wouldn't wear them. I wouldn't wear this color. Um, the next one I'm going to do is Scarlet Lake, and this is one of the newer ones. Um, so Scarlet Lake is again, it's it's a uh, a little warm, but pretty neutral or basic as far as your reds are concerned. Like if you think of your basic primary school red, this would be one of them. That's gonna bug me. Okay, next I'm going to go and do, um, do you know what, let's get this one out of the way first. So this one technically, I guess it could go in the pinks because I am doing a video with the pinks because I had a lot of colors that did not quite fit the reds. This color is actually carmine red and it's also, if you have a color ruby red, uh, they are a very pink red. A very cool red so I'm just gonna actually pop this one in here it's uh, one of the cooler ones but it's one of the lighter ones as well which is why I'm just gonna pop it in here and get it out of the way I think it's quite a bit cooler than those ones okay now I'm gonna go to do the other ones that I had talked about um, that are sort of they're like crimsony so they're they're red they're a little bit more on the blue side, so they're a little bit cooler. And I have a couple, this being one of them. So um, this one is um, 925 Crimson Lake and is actually one of my favorite colored pencils. And I, I don't even, I have a, like a little stub of one around here somewhere. And then I had to go buy this one. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't used this as much as you think I have. It's just that these newer, brand of the Prismacolors, they break a lot when you're sharpening them. So I actually had to sharpen it like three times to get it. Like every time I go to sharpen it, I have to sharpen it three times. It just the lead keeps breaking. Actually, it feels a little loose in there too. It just keeps breaking. It's very, very frustrating. I need to find this color in a different brand, I think. I even tried a thing I read online. Some people were heating up their Prismacolor pencils to sort of fuse the waxy lead inside the pencil casing back together so it didn't break as much. So I did try that with my heat gun and I got it all nice and warm and then I let it cool and it's still, I can feel how loose it is and I'll show you as soon as I finish this. I just don't want to resharpen it. See? <laughs> it's totally broken in there. Okay, the next one is 924 and this one is just called Crimson Red. But this is one of the old ones, and as you can see, the lead is fine. It's not broken. I really gotta stop whining about that and just move on to a new brand. 
I'm just very disappointed, that's all. I have been experimenting with a few different brands and I have one coming up here soon. Faber-Castell, try to find my new favorite colored pencil. All right, I'm gonna do the Faber-Castell one now. Actually, I'm just gonna get the last Prismacolor one out of the way. And this one's 937 and it's called Tuscan Red. Very dark, sort of, um, I don't know, burgundy, maroon? Really honestly, I don't know the difference between those two colors, maroon and burgundy. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos. And this one is um, 225 Dark Red. I do like the way they're just a tiny bit thicker than these ones are. The um, Luminance Colored Pencils by, oh, what's the brand? Karen Dash. I like the way they feel. They're thicker too. It, they just feel more comfortable to hang on to. This one I'm finding, I have to press harder to get a nice thick color. Harder than I did with the, the Prismacolor anyways. This Faber-Castell. I'm not really sure if it's wax or oil based. I know the Prismacolors are wax based. Okay, I'm going to move on to, what should I do next? Let's do our water soluble things here. Um, I have two water soluble colored pencils from Darwin that I that came in a set that I bought of, it was like 10 or 12, probably 12 colors a while ago, just to experiment with. I don't think they're like super high artist grade or anything, but I don't use them for fine art anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch these out again. I'm going to start from my warmest orangey ones out to the cooler ones. And there's only two, so it's not going to go that far. The, oh, sorry. This one's called Deep Vermilion. So Vermilion is one of those very orangey red colors. Now this one here, I find the, the pigment, it's very weak. Like I'm pushing quite hard and it's not really pushing, to, putting down a thick layer of color. Let's see what it looks like. And it's quite scratchy. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but it's quite scratchy. Um, we'll see what it looks like when I add water to it. Okay, let's get my pencil or my paintbrush here and some water. Well, it's getting more vibrant, but it's not getting more saturated. No, wait, more saturated, not more vibrant. The color is changing some, but the pigment is very weak, so it's not really super colorful. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm trying to say here? I'm a little disappointed with that one. Actually, I'm a lot disappointed with that one. Anyways, next, this one's Crimson Lake, so it should be similar to these colors up here. Yeah, this one definitely seems to have more pigment in it, though still not as much as the Prismacolor. I wonder if Prismacolor does water-soluble ones or any other brands. I wonder what other brands. I know these ones, they have a ink-tense one, which is supposed to be like ink in pencil form. And then when you wet it, instead of turning into like a watercolor, it turns into like an ink and then it dries permanently. I have not tried them. Much louder <laughs> than the other one, the Prismacolor. But yeah, they're, it's got more pigment than this one, but they're still not as nice and pigmented as the regular colored pencils. I do have another brand, actually, no, I do have another brand of water-soluble colored pencils. I just must not have a red one now that I think of it. This is not the one I'm thinking of. It's a different, different brand. Must be in a different hue. This one's definitely getting much pinker when I wet it. It is re-wetting just a little bit better than the Scarlet did. But again, they're rather, rather weak. So this next one is not technically a colored pencil. It is Derwent's Graphitint. And it's water-soluble graphite that they've tinted with pigment colors. So I have a set of these. I think there was probably only six in this set. I also have they come in these big, thick, chunky bars. Hold on, I'll just grab it, hold on. So they come in these big, chunky bars. Come on. Ooh. 
smooth. Okay, so they are the same thing. This one's burnt umber, actually. It's not, it's not the same color, but it's the same thing where it's a water-soluble graphite uh, that has been tinted with color. And they're, you know, this is a pack of six colors. And with these big ones, it's intended you could do like really big expression marks and stuff like that and sketching on a large scale. I've only just wet them just a little to test the colors, but I haven't actually done any work with them. I'm going to have to give that a try. So anyhow, back to this. This one here is called Port. And it is a very dark. And you can actually see, uh, it probably doesn't show up on camera very well. You can see the gray, the blackish gray graphite, as well as the tinted red pigments. They're, it's almost like you can see them both at the same time as I'm coloring this out. Kind of um, patchy. Trying to get like a solid color, but it's kind of patchy with the graphite and the colored pigment. I wonder if I can get, if it'll show up on camera at all. I'm sure I can't tell. Um, well, let's water it down and see what happens to it when it gets wet. It was way more red when it's wet, eh? That's how you know I'm Canadian, because I just said A. It's a nice sort of wine, dark wine color. Interesting. Okay, the next three water-soluble stick things that I have here are um, one uh, by Karen Dash, Da Ash, <laughs> Neo Color 2, they're water-soluble crayons, and then I also have Derwent's sort of take on these, and they are uh, called Derwent Art Bars. I bought a bunch of these, well, not a bunch, I bought a handful of these at my art store. They were clearing them out for like a buck a piece or something like that. So I bought a, a handful of the primaries, like a light and dark version of, of, you know, quite a few of them just to try. And uh, they're just very waxy and dry and water soluble. What else can I tell you about it? That's it. Let's give ourselves a little scribble here. No, oh, I didn't tell you the color. This is A05, primary red. Goes on better than the Derwent watercolored pencils, for sure. The tip is quite thick, so it's difficult to get any sort of <laughs> controlled detail out of it. I think it's much prettier when it's watered down, when it's uh, activated with water. But that could be just because I'm super partial to colored pencils. Could be. Or I mean watercolors. I'm partial to watercolors, not colored pencils. Okay, the next one is called Nutmeg. So I guess this technically could have gone, gone with the browns. Oh well, it's here now, let's do it now. It's very warm, it's very red, we're good, we're all good. Quite a bit of wax in these, um, which I think is helping to give this sort of splotchy, I don't know if you can see it, there's a splotchiness to it. I'm going to do this other one which is a similar idea. It's a crayon, uh, water soluble, and this one is by Karen Dash. And I bought a couple of these because a few YouTubers that I watch use them and love them. Um, so I thought I'd give them a try to see if I like them too. Um, this one is called Ruby Red. Oh, it's so much, it's so much smoother and creamier than the art bars. Like it just, it just feels so much smoother. I don't even like instantly you can feel the difference. It doesn't feel quite as waxy even though it probably is also some sort of a wax. So much nicer to work with. I would definitely recommend these over the Derwent ones if uh, if this is your jam. Oh it re-wets really nicely too. Very cool red bordering on pink. It's ruby red but rubies are more pinkish. It's so pretty. I like it. It's so much it's so much nicer than the, the Derwent ones. I will now move into the watercolors. So let me just get them out here. Okay, I've just sort of laid them out above me here in the order that I think is warmest to coolest. Most of them are Winsor & Newton. A couple of them are Daniel Smith, which is becoming one of my new favorite brands. I do have just a couple of oddballs though, and this oddball is Rembrandt's Permanent Red Light. 
Uh, and again, I think I, I picked these up because my art store had a little basket of clearance paint tubes. And I was like, okay. But I have used quite a bit of it, as you can see. It's all crimped up here where I run my little tube squeezer thingy over it. This is a very warm orangey red, like the scarlets and the vermilions. Very intense, lovely color. It reminds me of tulips in the sunshine, actually. Seeing tulips in the sunshine feels so far away right now. So cold and snowy out. <clears throat> so the next one's another uh, warm one, and it is Windsor Newton's Scarlet Lake. And, oh, you know what? I can give you the pigment info. For all you pigment nerds like myself out there, does this one even have it? It must somewhere. Oh, there it is. So it's pigment red 254 and pigment yellow 154. So it's not a single pigment color. Um, Scarlet Lake. I have a whole bunch of these little tubes of Windsor Newton watercolor paint. And if you know watercolor paints at all, this is very old labeling because I bought a huge lot of these little watercolor tubes off of somebody off of eBay who was selling a whole bunch of them. And I still have a lot, like, you know, watercolors, they last quite a while. Um, but I do have some, this is like their newer packaging looks like, so I do have some of those as well. Um, this one is Pigment Red 188. This is a single, single pigment warm Okay, I take it back. This one is Tulip in the Sunshine. Eat your pretty. I guess maybe they both could be. Tulips come in all kinds of colors. Okay, the next one is another Windsor Newton and it's Cadmium Red. Um, and its pigment number is Pigment Red 108. Um, cadmium is actually a toxic pigment. Is it a mineral? It's, no, it's a toxic pigment anyways, but I mean, as long as you don't eat it or drink your water that you're rinsing your brush off with, uh, you shall be fine. I don't prefer cadmium colors, actually. They're quite opaque, but like I said, I bought the lot and they just came with the lot, so I will use them up until they are gone. And it's kind of your, um, it's more of your neutral red. Like it's a little bit on the warm side, but it's a little bit closer to your primary, your, just your basic primary red. But you can see it's very pigmented and opaque. Alrighty, next up, Windsor Red. And this will also be like a, just a basic neutral red. Um, and it is pigment 254. It's a pyrrole color. Oh, I don't know if I can open this one. Oh, there it goes. I don't think watercolor paints ever go bad. <laughs> I've had these for so many years and they were secondhand when I bought them and they're still going. I think some of them are getting a little pasty, but it's watercolor. You just add water to it to reactivate it. So you can see we're getting just a little bit cooler, but it's still just, it's very, basic red. It's still very pretty. More transparent than the CAD, the cadmium. Alrighty, next is another Windsor Newton, but it's in their new packaging. And I bought this originally as a, they had a lim they had a few limited series sets, and I think this one was called something to do with sunsets or something like that. And it had a few colors in it. And uh, I really, really love this color, actually. I've used quite a bit of it. Uh, and I believe you can now buy them just open stock without having to get the set because the set was a limited edition set. I don't think you get all the colors that were in it, but I think you can get this one. And this is a diff difficult to read on this silver. Oh my God, I miss my young eyes. I'm gonna zoom this up here and then probably the camera can pick it up later. We'll see it on camera because I can't actually read it. Pigment red 187. It's, oh, it's called Sanguine. Sanguine red. Sanguine? Sanguine. I'm pretty sure that's how you say that. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, it wouldn't be the first time I've done that. I do that a lot. See, it's, it's cool, deep. 
almost res I don't know it's not quite res redder than raspberry no maybe I don't know it's beautiful I love it anyways even on this paper that I don't like I am currently painting on watercolor paper but it's a hot press watercolor paper by a brand called fluid and as it turns out I bought it to just try it out and as it turns out I don't like painting with watercolors on hot press paper but I thought it would be good for this because I can do watercolors and colored pencils because it's smooth. I'll show you the paper. I showed it in one of my other ones, but I'll show you again here. Next is a Winsor Newton Lizard and Crimson. Now this was one of my favorite colors, uh, which is why I, when I used up my little tube that I had, I went out and bought this big tube and then I learned that it's actually not light fast. So it's okay for sketching and illustrations and stuff, but if you are to sell work, like if you want to sell original watercolors, this is not a pigment you want to use because it will fade over time. But uh, it is Pigment Red 83. This is similar to Sanguine, actually. I think it will be a little bit pinker here as we dilute it. But it's a very lovely color. Okay, next. So now I'm on to a Daniel Smith. This is another beautiful color that I really, really love. And it's Deep Scarlet. And it is Pigment Red 175. I, uh, I've discovered Daniel Smith, I want to say, not too long before COVID broke loose. I wanna, you know, like maybe late 2018 or 2019. And uh, I'm really glad I discovered them. I love, I love their, I love their pigments. I love their watercolors. They even make oil paints. So I went and bought some of their oil paints. I had to go down to Seattle to buy them because uh, we can't get them in Canada. But yeah, this is a nice deep, I don't know, blood red. Okay, and I got another Winsor Newton one here, and this is Perlin Maroon or Perl, Perl, Perline, P-E-R-Y-L-E-N-E. Uh, and there's a few different perlin colors. There's a green, a violet, I have a couple of them, and they're just really nice, deep, earthy, I guess, rich colors. And this one, again, on this stupid silver, I can't read it, my stupid old eyes. Okay. Two more watercolors. So this is another Daniel Smith, and this is Lunar Red Rock. And if I remember correctly, this is a very granulating color. I don't know how well that will show up on this. Oh, no, stop, stop. It's just oozing out here a little bit. What was I saying? Yeah, I don't know if the granulation is gonna show up on this smooth paper, but it is a nice, opaque, earthy red. And see how rich that is and I don't know if you can tell how opaque it is but it's quite opaque. Oh yeah I think it's going to granulate at least some. I can see it separating already in there. Last watercolor also Dania Smith and it is Pymonite Genuine. I believe that's how you pronounce that and this is one of their I think because it says Pymonite Genuine. The new labels have a P on them. It's one of their Primatex that they claim come from like actual ground up stones. So and another way yeah, so when you go to look for the pigment, it just says genuine pimonite. There's no number because the it's not a synthetic pigment. It's a stone that's been ground up. I don't mean to be gross, but it's kind of like dry blood. It's so dark. It dilutes nicer than dry blood. This is almost bordering a brown. It's very, very deep. I don't know if you all watch other swatching videos. Uh, if you do, you may be familiar with the name Natasha Newton. She does quite a few swatching videos and I feel like this would be a Natasha Newton color. Every time she finds a color that she really likes, she calls it a Natasha Newton, or a Natasha color, actually, I think. It's very moody and muted, but lovely. So my last two watercolors are actually these, um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus liquid watercolors and they are a highly concentrated 
liquid pigment watercolor and you can use them just straight as is but because they are so concentrated of course you can dilute them uh, in water and a little bit goes a long long way so the first one I'm going to swatch here is Brilliant Cad Red so it would be their take on a cadmium but yeah that little tiny dot was all we're going to need they're very vibrant and intense colors and as you can see that like that little tiny dot if I was on better paper where the water would flow more than just soak in um, it would it would have gone a long long way and then the next one here is deep red rose so I'm thinking this is going to be sort of like a no is it all dried up it's going to be like um, a crimson you it's all pasty <laughs> it's gross <laughs> I mean, it's watercolor. I can just add water and, you know, everything will be fine, but I'm not really sure how it even got like that. Like, how could it possibly have dried out in here? I could probably just put some water in there, shake it up, and be good to go again. Very cool, very pinky, pretty red. Actually, this is more like a, like a quinacridone magenta, which if you're going for some your base palette of colors. This is this is a good combination, at, um, a warm red and a cool red. Okay, where are we here? I've got two gouache, an ink, and some markers. I think I'm going to put the gouache up here. Actually, what am I getting all over the place? Okay, gouache it is. And we're gonna start with what I believe is the cooler of the two. This is primary red, uh, Windsor Newton designer gouache. So gouache is much more opaque than watercolor, but you can work with it similarly. Similarly, and this particular primary red is actually quite transparent. I can I can see the paper right through it, but it will dry opaque and, and flat. It won't have any sheen to it. But you can water it out. Ooh, look how vibrant that is. You can water it out like you can watercolors to do light washes. The reason that people prefer the opaqueness is that you can paint a lighter color over a darker color, which you cannot do with watercolors. I am not very good with gouache, but they say you can paint with them that way. It's rather pretty, actually, that color. And then the next one here is Spectrum Red, which I think is going to be a... Oh, I did those backwards. That one was supposed to go here anyways, whatever. It's gonna be a warmer red, like a more like a primary or cadmium. It's also very hard to open. <laughs> Paint is all dried up and caked around. Actually, this is this is very lovely too. It's very nice deep. Definitely more opaque. Gouache is not actually intended to be used directly out of the tube. You're supposed to mix it with just a little bit of water to give sort of a like a thick cream texture. But even here I have it just a little bit dry. Okay, now I'll put the ink and the two markers down here at the bottom. So my ink is acrylic. It's um, Daler Rowney FW Acrylic Artist Ink. And this color is flame red. And I got this because I was painting, I wanna say Christmas cards one year, and all I had was these Winsor Newton inks, which I accidentally got left open and dried up, and it was called a like fire truck red or deep red or something like that. But even that was still too cool and pinky for what I really wanted. I wanted this harsh, well, not harsh, but the vibrant Christmassy red. And so I came across this and thought I'd give it a try and I really enjoyed it. It goes on super nice and smooth and opaque and it is very vibrant. And so being acrylic, once that dries, it's permanent. Um, so you could just layer over top of it or you don't have to worry about what you paint over top of it reactivating. Whereas with watercolor and gouache, um, they will, as soon as you try to paint over them with anything, they will reactivate. So there's tricks to doing that. Okay, the last two things I have are my Copic markers. Copic, however you wanna say it. Um, I'm also gonna just grab a piece of paper here to throw, not throw, but slide in underneath here because I do know these Copics will soak right through this paper onto the next sheet. So there. 
So I was very into Copics for a while, and so I have a couple handfuls of them, um, usually a lighter and a darker version of any hue, because I was blending them a lot. Uh, so I'll just swatch these two out here. Um, I will do this one here first. It's red, or R29, red 29, lipstick red, it's called. It's very pretty, but I'm telling you, I would look horrible with that color of lipstick on. Just trying to layer it up a little bit. And then the next one here is red 89, which is dark red. And yes, that is indeed a dark red. You can layer up markers and get a darker color each time. Although it didn't show very well with that one. And there you go. Yeah, see, it bled right through. There are all the beautiful reds. Very beautiful little square there. Um, I'll see if I can just sort of zoom in here a little bit. And uh, maybe focus and get a little closer look at these colors. I don't know if you can see the, um, oh, that's not it. Down here, there we go. The, uh, I get it to focus, the red and the graphite pigments mixing in there. It's much more noticeable in person. But if you made it all the way through to the end of this video, first off, I'd like to say thank you and way to go. And, uh, it would be nice if you just let me know, do you like the color red? Uh, and if you do, what is your favorite red? Do you like the sort of orangier ones or do you like the pinkier ones? Some of the darker, moodier, desaturated ones. Which one do you like? Um, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing. It'll show me that uh, I have people out there who actually enjoy what I am doing and uh, yeah have a great day or evening or whatever you're up to and I'll talk to you next time bye